Hey everybody and welcome back. Uh, today is going to be all about 1860s hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I go from this to this. But there's more. This is only what I consider a base style. So I'm going to show you some other things I can do it. So here's one style with just one addition. I've now turned my hair into a day look with my lovely looped braids. So here's look number two from this, from that basic set. And then we have look number three, which with different accessories added onto it is a great day to evening look. So there's this look too. <laughs> right here's look number four, which is an evening look with some lovely ringlet curls in the back. Before I can actually style my hair, I need to prep it, which means adding texture to my very, very straight hair. For the very front of my hairline, I am pulling out about a one inch wide section just from ear to ear, basically what will frame my face once my hair is done. I am going to use U-pins and I'm adding some lot of body, uh, which has been diluted with water to my hair before I start pinning it up. I am taking a small chunk of hair and basically wrapping it in a figure eight shape around the pin and I'm not going the whole way down the section of hair. I only need to do about the top half of these chunks of hair for what I want to do with it. To keep the hair on the pin while it sets, I am just using a bobby pin and sliding it up straight up the middle of the pin just to hold the hair in place. And I'm going to do that to the entire one inch wide section of hair the whole way across. Normally for an event, I would do this the night before while my hair is still a little damp from having washed it. And I would use, rather than the setting lotion, I've used the Lotta Body here. I prefer to use something like a pomade or pomatum, um, what would have been used in the 1860s basically so an animal fat based hair product yes but it lasts longer than the lot of body I found in my hair uh, the only reason I'm not using it for this is because I don't the um, using a pomade means it needs several hours basically overnight to really soak into the hair properly and set properly and I'm doing this all in one day so <laughs> that's why I am just using a modern setting lotion. The, you can see me using um, pin curl clips to hold the pins out of my way. That is mainly so I can see while I'm continuing to set my hair. They don't have any other function in this set otherwise. I am also, as I said, I am not putting the entire strand of hair onto the U-pin. What I'm going to do with what's left hanging loose is I'm just going to really quickly, when I do the rest of my hair, just crimp that as well. This helps the end of each strand of hair below where it gets waved from the U-pin to blend into the rest of my hair. And I am just going to take my crimper and my heat protector, my heat protectant spray and go through and just crimp the entire rest of my hair. So that's what this is going to be. All right. So it's been a couple of hours and I've let, given my, my new pin curls up here some time to fully dry and set. I have taken the pins out of the back of my hair where I had it, where I crimped it, and now I'm going to take out the U-pins. So, first things first is I want to take out these clips that were just holding the pins out of my face. Open up my bobby pin case so I can put them back in there. All right get all of this hair out of my way. 
All right, so take these out. First, I'm going to just pop out the bobby pin from the center. Take that out. And then this, if I just push it up from the bottom, slides nice and easy out of the hair. And this is the result I get. <laughs> so, as you can see, it is very tightly springy. So much fun. And this is after using only some lot of body and letting it sit for, what time is it now? Two, two and a half hours. So, pop out the bobby pin first, then slide the U pin out the other way. Alright, so as you can see, I've got these really tight little wavy bits going on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull them down a little bit. First, I'm going to run my fingers through. <laughs> you can see how much extreme fluff I get from this. Now I'm just going to nice and gently comb it out with my paddle brush. <laughs> you can see what kind of crazy halo I've got going on now. So now I'm going to comb all of my hair out together. I'm going to part first right down in the middle. Very even. I'm going to look in the mirror and part right down the middle. So I've got a center part and where it goes funky I'm gonna sort of curve and make a Y part. So right here and I'm just gonna separate out the hair that is in front of my ear. So I'm going from this little corner behind my ear basically up to here with a slight curve to it. And I'm getting both some of my crimped hair as well as what I curled with the U-pins. Which is what I want, so that's good. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side and kind of curve. I'm gonna just pin this back, all of this back here back really quick because it's not what I want to work with first. All right, so I've got my two front bits of hair here. You can see I've got my Y part and all this fluff. To further separate those U-pin curls and just get my hair extra, extra fluffy. I am coming through with my boar bristle brush. It also sort of helps incorporate the two different textures into each other. And find that part again. Because of my widow's peak, the very center doesn't always want to stay parted, which gets a little frustrating. So, oops, I'm missing the pins for that. Okay. 
I am going to be putting these in my hair next. These are two little tiny pads. They are slightly tapered. They curve a little bit so that they follow the shape of my head. These are just some wool felt stuff with a little extra wool for padding and I've got a wig clip on that. Ooh, excuse me. And I'm also going to I sort of left a little bit of a hole at the very point of this so that I can easily stick a bobby pin in to help secure the back end of these rats as well. that in because my hair is so fluffy I am not going to worry about further teasing it I'm just going to smooth it back over the rat one thing I do do is I double wrap the hair here so I'm going to section this little bit off I'm going to take the higher up section of hair and just kind of wrap it under here. Then all of this that's left here, I'm going to pull this forward a little bit. And then I'm going to catch the pin I put in the back end of the rat into the hair here. And then this just covers the rest of it. I'm only going to temporarily clip it back because I want to make sure I balance the two halves before I put bobby pins into it. So I'm going to smooth down a little bit. Make sure I'm putting them evenly from side to side. and over. And under the rat. I'm going to catch it with that pin. And I want to make sure that the rat doesn't show at my ear line. So I think this one needs to go a little higher. At least I have myself in the scalp. Alright. And then I'm just going to use the rest of this to cover the back end of the rim. And that looks even, so I'm going to pin as close to the wrap as possible so that my pins kind of hide against that little dip. Once I get my hair back, you'll be able to see a little bit better the heart-shaped dip that forms here, but 
All right, so now to deal with all of this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically do four vertical parts in my hair. So one straight down the middle. I'm gonna clip this out of the way. And I want to keep my hair combed in a backwards direction because I don't want to lose my Y part here. And I'm gonna do another vertical part here. And again, I'm gonna clip this so it doesn't feel very even. Works better when I actually part it evenly. got this hair here, I've got all of this hair here, and again I'm going to clip my more middle section out of the way, and I'm just going to braid this, incorporating this hair here into the braid. section here and this I want to make sure it stays smooth on the top of my head and then I braid it only all the way down at the bottom. So to finish this off I'm just gonna kind of twist these two around each other. And then I basically just want to arrange them all the way down at the base of my skull into kind of like a loose knot, chignon style. So if I were actually doing this for an event, I would of course put a lot more bobby pins in my hair. And one more thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put something on here just to tame the flyaways down. Had I used a pomatum or a pomade to set my hair, I would just use the exact same thing to smooth it. So this would be a just super, super basic hairstyle, um, which could then have stuff added onto it. So. with. And how do I do those other things? Let me show you. I have a whole bunch of hair pieces. So I'm going to start with this one. It is a set of three braids, which was a really common popular day style. So we're going to start with this one and I'm going to show you how I add this into my hair. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unpin the braids again. my braids forward so that I have room on the back of my head. So this is just, it started out as a single extension. What I did was I took up apart a couple other ones and I, I sewed basically three sets. I just switched them together so I had more hair in the single piece. And what I'm going to do is All the way down, as far down on my head as I can get. All right, so I pinned my looped braids in place. Now I'm going to pin the other braids over top of it.
Alright, I'm gonna double check real quick first. Yep, that is definitely not even. Let's try that again. All I'm going to do now is with the braids from my own hair, I'm just going to kind of loop over. And I just want to hide where it's pinned and where it clips in. So I crossed over the two inner braids first, and now I'm going to use the two outer braids across the top to cover the top of the extension. The name of the game is hiding your weave in this one. And what I want is I want the back of my head to be as flat as possible. For one very important reason, this giant chunk of hair I've got loose there. This is a day style. What do you do during the day? You wear a bonnet when you go outside. The spoon bonnets, this one was made by Timely Tresses and I absolutely love and adore it, are an interesting piece of headwear. They are meant to sit as far back on your head as possible, basically. So I want this part to be sitting at the base of my skull because I want the spoon bonnet is really supposed to be behind your head. They are utterly <laughs> ridiculous and don't give you any shade whatsoever. But as you can see, my braids hang out underneath my spoon bonnet. So. Here is one of my day looks. Super easy, quick, you're good to go. A quick note about spoon bonnets. One thing that is really important is making sure your hair is all the way back because your spoon bonnet should not be worn like a visor. It should not come forward, it should not jut forward. Really, the front edge of the spoon bonnet is meant to be vertical when it's on your head, so. Here's a day look. <laughs> but I'm not done with this yet. So the next look I wanna do is one that can actually really be a, a day to evening look. It's one that works for both, or an all day look, shall we say. With, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna pin my braids back up the way I had when I started, so. They don't even need to be perfect this time around because I'm going to be covering them up completely. I'm also pinning this a little higher than I did before. It is off the back of my neck and completely on, on my hair. So this one is actually not a clip-in extension. What I did was I took a most of a pack of braiding hair, um, what I would add if I were doing really long braids. And I just did a, a two-strand rope braid for it. And then I just kind of swirled it around until I liked how it looked. And then to make sure it stays this way, I sewed it to some um, hex net mesh. It's, it's stronger than a tool, but it's not quite as strong as like a petticoat mesh. But yeah, you can see just some really big sloppy hand stitches just to help keep it in place. So all I'm going to do is just plop it there and pin it to the back of my head. Having the mesh there keeps the shape, it also gives me a little more to pin into as well. So I can leave it just like this if I want. 
perfectly done, perfectly good to go. There you go. I can also, I've got this antique hair comb that I picked up a while back, so I'm just going to slide it in so it just kind of peeks up at the top of my chignon. And one more thing I want to do to it is I'm going to put a net over it and the pin. It's all getting covered with a net. This one is from Timely Tresses, just like my spoon bonnet. And it's just, it's a hair net with a wire band in it that is covered with velvet. Uh, this velvet will keep it sticking to my hair and it won't go anywhere. I don't even need to put pins into it, which is my favorite part. So I'm going to arrange it right behind my rolls and just gently tug it all the way down so that it covers my entire chignon and the, the comb, of course. As I said, this can also work for evening, having this giant chignon. And all I'm gonna do is just add another thing on top. This is a silk hairnet. It got rained on last time I wore it, so it's a little bit, <laughs> not entirely happy. But it is a net with, again, a wire band with ribbon pleated on top. And this, I'm just gonna, which was my inside and which was my outside, because there is a difference. Okay, so I'm just gonna plop this down right on top of the velvet band of the hairnet. This does have two loops, so I can pin it to secure it as well. But it just nicely drapes over the rest of my hair, just like that. And then this is a great dinner or evening look, but I did this for a formal dinner, not for a ball or anything. That's, that's what I made this hairnet for. Let's do two evening time looks. They're, they are related to each other, but they're not quite the same. For an earlier evening loop, I've got a pair of fake curls. For a little later, I've got a single piece of a lot of curls. Now this one, I would put into my hair the same way I did the braids, so I'm not gonna show this one because it, it really, it's the same exact thing. You know, clip it in, cover the seam with the braids. But let's do the slightly earlier look. I'm gonna wiggle this between my braids because I want these to sit forward. Again, this is just, this started out as a single extension that I then just layered up to have more hair in a narrow amount of space. So I'm gonna arrange this starting right behind my ear and towards the center. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. lower braids, I'm going to come up in the middle, cross, and then do my first pass over the top of the extension. Basically what I'm trying to do with this is separate the center back of the two sets of, braid, of curls. Then once those are in place, I'm going to take the upper braids and just make sure I have covered. Now, these curls are still really tight and short because I only just took them off the curlers for the video, but they will relax down with a little bit of time and sit lower. So to, to dress this up and have some fun with it for your 
fun evening hair, you could wear a headband style piece, which would have things that fall down right in front of the curls. You could always add, you know, some flowers. I'm always bond to one right in the middle. You could always you could add, you know, a big giant bow, which would also help cover up where your curls are pinned in. Or, you know, there's everyone's favorite. A tiara. <laughs> So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope it gives you a lot of ideas for easy ways to do 80 and 60s hair. And if you do try one of these, um, send me a message, you know, hit me up on Instagram or wherever. Um, I would love to see it. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more, you can subscribe. Definitely like this video too if you had fun watching it. Thank you so much. <laughs>